hemorrhoidectomy remains the gold standard for treatment of grade 3 and 4 hemorrhoids. In recent years, the use of new surgical devices has been implemented in an effort to reduce operative time, bleeding, post-operative pain, and enable a quicker return to normal activities for the patient. In this video, we will describe our method for performing a ligature hemorrhoidectomy on a 57-year-old female with painful grade four hemorrhoids. The equipment required for the procedure is a Hill-Ferguson retractor, Gillies forceps, an artery forcep, a bipolar energy device such as ligature or voyant, handheld diathermy, gauze, a sterile field, betadine prep, and local anaesthetic. The patient is given a general anaesthetic and placed in high lithotomy with some head down tilt. We then prep the area with betadine and drape to create a sterile field. Long acting local anaesthetic is infiltrated bilaterally. The Hill-Ferguson retractor is placed within the anal canal. Grasp the external component of the hemorrhoid with an artery forcep, taking care not to grasp above the dentate line which will cause bleeding. Retract medially with counter traction applied by the assistant on the perianal skin to create a ridge of tissue. Incise the ridge with cutting diathermy, taking care not to excise too much perianal skin, as this will extend the healing phase unnecessarily. Once the ridge has been released, use the ligature device along each edge of the hemorrhoid, taking large bites. The hemorrhoidal veins on the lateral edge will bleed if diathermy is used, particularly with larger external or circumferential hemorrhoids. Care is taken to avoid the internal sphincter, which should be identified at this point. This is often best identified using the unactivated diathermy to tease out and identify the white circumferential internal sphincter fibres in the spidery plane underneath the hemorrhoid. Here the surgeon can be seen sweeping this away from the hemorrhoidal tissue. Upon reaching the hemorrhoidal pedicle, transect with the ligature, but avoid excessive traction as this will avulse the hemorrhoid, causing bleeding. The process is repeated for remaining hemorrhoids, taking care to avoid wounds in the posterior midline which can fail to heal, and leaving adequate skin bridges. Remember, anal stenosis occurs when excess anoderm is excised, not with the removal of mucosa above the dentate line.
At this level, the ligasaur can be used to tidy up any remaining hemorrhoidal tissue left behind. We then dress the area with gelinet and combine. Spongy stand is not needed. The patient was discharged home when comfortable postoperatively with non-narcotic analgesia and regular appearance. We do not use metronidazole as the analgesic effect seems to be offset by increased nausea.